Hi, my name is Gerhard Schwartner and welcome to Selling Power TV. Today we are at the Sales 2.0 conference in Boston and it is our pleasure to welcome Tom Cates, who is the founder and CEO of the Brookside Group. Welcome, Tom. Thank you, Gerhard. Great to be here. Tom, you're one of the world's leading minds when it comes to customer retention. What does that have to do with sales? Well, I think customer retention is an integral part of sales. At the end of the day, if you think back to Peter Drucker, he said the purpose of a business is to create and keep a customer. He didn't say to create a customer once and throw them back. He didn't say to create a transactional customer. It's to create a customer. And so inherent in that is retention. You've got to keep them around. Aside from all the great benefits that come to your corporation from doing so, it's just part of sales. You're not there to sell a transactional relationship. You're there to sell a long-term, mutually beneficial relationship. You're familiar with the concept of the net promoter score. How does that predict customer loyalty? I think net promoter is a great tool that has been poorly applied. I think net promoter is a great tool for business to consumer relationships where you're trying to drive up response rate and measure an average or an aggregate of a group. I think it's also great on transactional relationships or moment in time relationships. If I go have the oil changed in my car, they probably ask me, ought to ask me a couple questions. Are you satisfied? How'd you do? Would you recommend us? But in and of itself, it is not anywhere close to the, total, the totality of my relationship with Ford. Imagine your wife. Would you recommend me to a friend, right? You wouldn't measure your personal relationships. Why would we measure our business relationships with one question? Tom, what is the sales equity process and how does it work? Sales equity is a great concept. We're really excited about it. In many respects, it's the analogy to brand equity. And if you think about it, it's got three parts the way we apply it. First of all, we're talking about the equity that the sales team, the account service team bring to the deal. Are they bringing value to the deal or are they just an interchangeable part? Send me out the next consultant you have. So what we're trying to do is one measure from the client's perspective, how much equity have you built with them? How vested are they in maintaining a relationship with you? Two, does the sales team know it? What's really cool about our sales process in the sales equity uh, program is the first thing we'll do is we'll get some feedback from a client. We'll then go to the account rep or the salesperson and say, hey, we've got some great feedback from one of your biggest clients. Do you want to see what he or she said? The sales rep, of course, says, yeah, they're a big, important client of mine. And we say, well, wait a minute. Before I tell you what your client said, tell me what you think your client's going to say. And we ask the salesperson to answer all the same questions. They're going to say, I'm really good at this, and I do this all the time. And then we show them what we call the blind spots, areas where the sales rep thinks they're doing very well, and yet for whatever reason, it's not working for the client. Now we've got the sales rep's attention. Five minutes before, they wouldn't have paid attention to any coaching, any training. Frankly, five minutes from now, they're not going to pay any attention. But for that brief moment, it's not me telling them as their manager they need to change. It's their sales rep. It's their client. And they've got that gap, that blind spot. And the third key component to the sales equity process is we want to give them some real-time, just-in-time coaching, training, tips, tools for that particular one-on-one -on -one relationship, which might be very different than they have to do with their next relationship. And so measure, self-assessment of blind spots, and then deliver real-time tips and tools and coaching. That's our sales equity process. Do you think that customers will resist taking a survey? You know, I think as consumers, we've gotten very resistant because we know, frankly, if somebody sends us a survey, nothing ever happens. We've had unbelievable success rate in getting response rates. We just launched for a Fortune 5 corporation, one of the largest corporations on the planet. They have an 86% response rate. Most of our clients get in the high 50s and 60% response rates. But that's because we're not going after B2C consumer relationships where Coca-Cola shouldn't care what Tom Cates thinks. On the other hand, if I happen to be the buyer at Walmart for soft drinks, Coca-Cola should care exactly what I think. And if I'm that buyer, I'm going to give Coca-Cola my feedback. And so when these relationships are big and important, we find response rates go up very high. Clients want to give you feedback. It's up to you to listen and act upon it. Salespeople are usually not asked to focus on customer retention. How can they influence their company to do so? You know, there is no head of customer retention at most companies. Now, a number of the very more successful ones do have a head of customer retention, and they're starting to pick up on it. But most organizations, as they said, have a head of sales, director of sales, VP of sales. 
And so on one hand, you'd sit there and say, well, nobody's interested in retention, but we are interested in revenue. We're interested in cross-selling, upselling, price premiums, trusted advisor status. And so as a salesperson, what we ought to be going to our boss and our boss's boss and saying, look, client retention is just the first step in me cross-selling them our next product line in me getting the price premium and us having a long-term mutually beneficial relationship. Well, thank you, Tom, for sharing your insights with us. Really appreciate the time. Thank you, Gerhard. Mm -hmm.